Hello friends, welcome back. Have you heard of the three stages of the spiritual life? We're going to have a quick overview of those three stages and it's important to know what they are, especially if we want to advance in the spiritual life and deepen our union with Jesus. The spiritual writers give a ton of attention to these three stages and we've barely skimmed the surface of this on our YouTube channel. In fact, we've never specifically identified them. So I'm going to show you a brief video clip from a parish mission I did where I give a quick overview. And after the clip, we're going to go through four blocks that prevent us from advancing in the spiritual life. How much more? All I know is this. Yesterday's experience of Jesus isn't good enough for today. Because today God wants to do something new. We can't rely on yesterday's blessings, yesterday's memories, Yesterday's experiences, every day is new. Every day is exciting in the kingdom of God. The graces that we responded to in the past, God wants to build upon them, absolutely. But even those mistakes He wants to build upon today. But let us not rest on yesterday's experience, because today He wants to do something new. Let this be an, an exciting time in your spiritual life. He wants to work something new in you today. In the church, and if you look at the, I call them the great five. I think if I can remember them all. St. Catherine of Siena, St. Um, I only can remember one. St. <laughs> John of the Cross, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Uh, Bernard of Clairvaux, and St. Uh, Francis of, of uh, de Sales. The, these five have contributed in, in a great manner to the spiritual life of the church through their writings. Now there's more, but these, I, I like these big five because they're doctors of the church. And if you read their writings, they talk about the stages of the spiritual life. Three stages. Now sometimes they use different language, but they mean the same thing. Uh, for example, St. Teresa of Avila will talk about the mansions, the seven mansions. St. John of the Cross we won't use that language. But there's three traditionally stages of the spiritual life. And if we want to live the fulfillment of our life, to deep union with Jesus, it is necessary that we go through these three stages. What are they? The purgative, illuminative, and unitive stages of the spiritual life, which lead to the beatific vision, which is heaven. But those three stages, the purgative, illuminative, and unitive stages. Now, what, what are they? Now, just really briefly, and I just want to touch on them just to, just to push you a little bit more. The purgative stage, I think we could categorize that as when we first make this decision to say, Jesus, I want to live for you. It's the beginning of the moral life, the beginning of mental prayer, the beginning of life in the church. It's, it's the beginning of turning away from mortal sin. The, Illuminative stage is where God starts giving us a deeper grace to be able to recognize His will in our circumstances. Often in this stage, the, the, the writers talk about God giving great, sometimes special favors to souls where they become incredibly aware of His presence. And very often in the illuminative stage is also great purifications, great sufferings in a person's life. And every suffering is ordered for the purification of that person. Uh, it, the, the, in this stage, uh, mental prayer uh, becomes more deep. Uh, this, the virtues become more stable. Mortal sin is, is rare. But venial sin still exists. Uh, and then St. Catherine of Siena will say that in this stage that we serve God more out of, uh, because of his blessings. She will say, Catherine of Siena, in the purgative stage, St. Catherine of Siena says that we will serve God because we're afraid of hell. That's a good starting point, <laughs> right? That's good to be afraid of hell. And then she says in the, in the illuminative stage, well, then we recognize how good God is, how wonderful he is, and he wants to bless us. And so we chase after him because of his great blessings, which is good too. Both are good. It's just one's better. And then you go on to the unitive stage and say, Catherine of Siena, they don't say, well, there, this is, we, we don't serve God because of fear or because of his great blessings. Just, we serve him and seek him just for his sake, purely out of love. St. Catherine writes, these are the three stages for which many have the capacity and all three can be present in one and the same person. 
And so I'm just bringing these stages to you because sometimes we don't hear about them, we don't talk about them, and it's good to be aware because then we can start recognizing maybe, oh, this is what God is doing in my life. There's so much more that could be said, but I just want you to think about, could there be more? This final stage, the unitive stage, the saints talk about this in such a beautiful way. In this stage, for example, there's a constant awareness of God's presence in one's life. There's some that, I've heard people say this, they say something like, oh, I don't need to experience God, that's not for me, I can just follow him by faith. Well, if you look at them, that's great, follow him by faith, but you know, if you look at the pattern of the saints in that unitive stage, there is not a saint who has achieved this, a unitive stage that didn't experience God. (laughs) In fact, this is, the awareness of God in their life is an indication that one is in that unitive stage stage of spiritual growth. And so, you know, they talk about this stage also as a stage where one is absolutely free of fear of suffering, fear of anxieties. Beautiful, isn't it? How much of our life is filled with fear and worry and anxiety? And how much just fear of suffering? We, we have a, a, in our culture, it's like we want to run from suffer, suffering in every way imaginable. We will sacrifice so much just to be free from suffering. Well, God said, I got a better thing for you. My grace can bring you to a point where you're not afraid to suffer. That you will always be able to experience my presence. That you will have a constant, you'll live in a constant state of joy. That's, that's, these are characteristics of that final stage. And I'm sharing this with you simply to whet your appetite. <laughs> like, I don't know about you, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I, I, I have worries, fears, and anxieties. Sometimes they cripple me. I'm not always in a constant state of joy. Ask my wife. <laughs> I, I wanna get there. But here's the point. If this is God's will, for everyone. This is where sainthood is found, holiness. And God's will for us is deep union with Him. This is possible over here. The problem is if we don't believe it, we won't aim for it. And the greatest, the biggest enemy of great is good. So hey, here at Lourdes, we got it good. Don't we? Great, there's a great spiritual heritage. We have a beautiful sanctuary now. Look at it, it's good. We, we have wonderful preaching on Sundays. We have the sacraments, we have a wonderful pastor. Oh, we got it good, and this is all true. But let's not settle. Realize that God has something great for us a deep union with him that is possible. When the spiritual writers talk about this, they say that to move into that area, we need profound humility and great love. And this complete reliance for God to carry us to that point. Yes, there needs to be discipline in our life. While we execute the disciplines, with us a constant acknowledgement that I can't do anything without you, God. All my efforts are fruitless without you, yet I'm going to try anyway. (laughs) Now carry me. In other words, do your best, let God do the rest. So the three stages of the spiritual life are the purgative way, the illuminative way, and the unitive way, which leads to the beatific vision. Now, what are some blocks that prevent us from advancing in the spiritual life? Let's look again at the the doctors of the church and just highlight four things that prevent us from advancing. Number one, carelessness of sin. St. Teresa of Avila said that she'd received some bad advice from some priests, and this really harmed her in her spiritual life. What was venial sin, they said, was not sin at all. And what was serious mortal sin, they said, was venial sin. This did me so much harm. I went on in this blindness for, I believe, more than 17 years until a Dominican father, a very learned man, enlightened me about many things. 
St. Teresa of Avila saying how much harm it did her from not taking sin seriously because sin hurts us and offends God. Second block in the spiritual life, not avoiding the near occasions of sin. St. Teresa writes, And seeing my lack of amendment, I became extremely vexed about the many tears I was shedding over my faults. For neither was my resolutions nor were the hardships I suffered enough to keep me from placing myself in the occasion and falling again. They seemed fraudulent tears to me. The whole trouble lay in not getting at the root of the occasions and with my confessors were of little help. For had they told me of the danger I was in and that I had an obligation to avoid those friendships without a doubt, I believe I would have remedied the matter. I find it interesting that St. Teresa of Avila says sometimes the occasion of sin is the relationships that we have. So there is occasions in our life where we have to avoid certain relationships because we know that those relationships will harm our relationship with God and lead us into sin. The third block to advancing in the spiritual life, self-reliance. St. Teresa of Avila writes, This self-reliance was what destroyed me. I give you counsel that you don't think that through your own strength or efforts you can arrive, for reaching the stage is beyond our power. If you try to reach it, the devotion you have will grow cold. But with simplicity and humility, you will achieve everything. Say, your will be done. St. Teresa highlighting the fact that if we want to grow into spiritual life, we must acknowledge that God must do the work within us. In other words, we, we have to try our best, but realizing that God does everything for us. We have to have that good will, but then realize we're helpless. God has to carry us through the stages of the spiritual life. Now, when we realize this, she says that then we can experience a holy freedom. And that means that we are free from this uh, tension, inner tension in the spiritual life of thinking, oh, we got to do this, 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 and we have to do it all perfectly. Now, she writes that when we come to this humility and this reliance on God, it frees us from this inner tension of striving. The fourth block in advancing in the spiritual life, not valuing the graces of God. St. Teresa of Avila writes, A soul to whom God grants such pledges has a sign that he wants to give it a great deal. If not impeded through his own fault, it will advance very far. But if the Lord sees that after he places the kingdom of heaven in the soul's house, the soul turns to earthly things, he will not only fail to show it the secrets that are in his kingdom, but will seldom grant it this favor. And then, just for a short space of time. To advance in the spiritual life, St. Teresa is saying we must value the grace that God gives us. Now, how do we value the grace that God gives us? By responding to the grace God gives us. So maybe here are some examples. Um, you're in your day and you maybe recognize the duty of the moment in a new way. Well, just don't admire the duty of the moment. Do the duty of the moment. <laughs> Maybe in your day you see something beautiful. There's another example. You see something beautiful and you recognize this beauty is from God. Well, how do we respond to this? Thank God. Just praise Him interiorly, quickly. Um, another example, maybe you recognize mortal sin in your life that you didn't realize was there before or you didn't see the seriousness of it. Well, just don't admire that revelation. Take action and go to confession. And we, we can get we can fool ourselves by just simply being consoled in the moment of realizing something, but this has to move us to an action. You know, maybe you, you get the little prompting of grace within the heart to pray in your day. Well, then pray during the day, or else those promptings maybe might not come to you. But here's just a caution with these promptings that the Lord gives us. If these promptings that we perceive are from coming, coming from the Lord, lead us away from our duty of the moment, they are likely not the Holy Spirit. Because we can't ne neglect the circumstances and the duties that we find ourselves in. So if I find myself with these great inspirations that I think are coming from the Holy Spirit, that, but they prevent me from being a good father to my children or a good husband to my wife, Janelle. 
well, then I can really discern quickly, well, this is not the Holy Spirit. This is some fleshly desire that is brung up within me, or maybe it's demonic at the worst case, or it's coming from the world. But these inspirations should not lead us away from the duty. But at the same time, when we recognize a prophet from the Holy Spirit, we've got to act. We got to act. I hope this helps you, friends. I hope this helps you. I know this has helped me. So the three stages of the spiritual life. We'll do more videos on this. We'll, a lot more could be said about this. And blocks that prevent us. These are just again skimming the surface. But I hope this helps you in a, in a little way. Please share with me below what stood out to you and why. I always love learning from you. I read every com comment. I don't respond to every single one of them, but I read every one. So thank you, and we will see you soon. God bless you.